Hey everyone, and welcome to this video tutorial to show you how to set up and use Tiny Audio Diffusion, which is a recent project that I have been working on, uh, focused on being able to perform waveform audio diffusion on limited hardware. So in this video, I will show you how to get your environment set up to get, uh, get started generating samples with some pre-trained models um, and demonstrate some of the interesting things that you can do um, with a couple of different models. So first off to note, there's a couple prerequisites. Um, the first is that you need to be running this on a Linux system. So like, for example, I have um, I have Windows here and I'm running it on WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, second, you have to have a good capable GPU um, and the NVIDIA toolkit installed. And uh, you get more information on, there's more information on the repository page if you want to figure out how to download this and get this set up. But once you have everything installed, you can check to make sure everything's working by typing in the command line, NVIDIA SMI, and it should come up with something like this. Um, and you can see that I have the 11.8 version installed and anything I think above that should also work. Um, and then the third thing is that you need to have Anaconda or Miniconda installed. Um, you can see that at, it'll say something like base here. Uh, that will allow you to be able to basically just run the environment setup files and um, it'll install everything for you and then you create kind of its own environment and then you can run things from there. So those are the, the basic prerequisites that you need to have. So to get this going, um, you just basically go to the uh, repository page which the link will be in the description and you can you can clone it so get the code here and you do git clone and then you paste it um, I'm I'm not going to do that because I actually already have it downloaded so once you do have it downloaded then you just cd cd into it so then we're in tiny audio diffusion now um, and then so for here we'll go it has motivation on here then the readme the background we're going to go down to the setup and basically just follow the steps that it has here to get everything set up. Um, again, it says, you know, note you got to have the G right GPU for this. But again, the purpose of this is to be able to run on very limited hardware. So you don't need to have like a super uh, high capacity, high power GPU. Like I have a very low um, VRAM GPU. I was trying to get this to run on less than two gigabytes of VRAM, which is very small. So uh, First, we're going to create the virtual environment. Like I said, you have Anaconda installed. Make sure that's good to go. Um, you can CD. So I guess we'll just start. We'll just look at all the folder, all the folders and everything that exists in this repository here. So everything is the same. It should be on there. I have a couple extra things in here just because um, this is where I was developing it. So we're going to CD into the setup folder. So we're in setup now. And then basically, we are going to run this command, conda and create. And this environment file we're going to uh so within here setup we have environment and then requirements so we would do um conda m create f and then the environment file again i don't want to run this so take a long time because it's going to set up the dependencies and then all the pip requirements that are in the requirements file here and you can go and look to see what those are if you want to um so that's good. That should take a minute to install. But once you have that installed, then you can run this command. Um, it should basically, everything should be automatically set up. It should be functional. And it'll say you should activate the tiny audio diffusion environment to get this going. So you basically just do conda activate tiny audio diffusion. Boom. And then we have this right here. So, uh, so we are now, we now have the environment activated. And then if you wanted to just see everything that's installed, you can do pip list or something like that. And then he's like, okay, now we have all the packages that we need installed. So those are good to go. So we're finished with, we're finished with this. We can CD back out of setup and we're back into the, the main folder here, tiny audio diffusion. And we're going to install the Python kernel for Jupyter notebook. Uh, this is only for the inference notebook to generate samples, which is what we're going to do in this video. Uh, you don't need it necessarily to train but it's just kind of good to do anyways. And it's only literally just copying this one line of code here. So copy it, boom, paste it in here. It's like, all right, we have this insert installed. So when we open up Jupyter Notebook, we should have a kernel for this. The third thing is to the define the environment variables. So again, if we look at our files here, uh, when this is downloaded, we have an env.tmp file, which should be right here. Um, if this loads up, so this has some placeholder information in here, and uh, which is shown right here. And basically, you need to replace this 
first off, rename it to just .env like I have here. And then within that, replace this with the information of your uh, username for weights and biases and your API key. And then uh, whatever, you can name this whatever you know project you want to run. Um, so and if you if you don't have weights and biases account, you can sign up for it. Um, and then also just an example of how this was uh, how this was logged, you know, the output of it is right here. So I was keeping track of this while I was training these things, the kicks, snare, hi-hats, and percussion model. Um, so, and then there's outputs here that have like samples, you know, different samples, and then the, uh, spectrograms and things that go along with it. And there's a lot you can do with this. So it's kind of just handy to be able to watch things while they train. So we'll close that back over here. Cool, cool, cool. So um we basically have things set up now so now we're going to go on to the pre-trained model section because we want to get into starting to generate some samples and you need some models to generate some samples so uh what you would do is you would go into one of these links into hugging face and then download one of the models for example the kick model here and as well the the config file that goes along with it and then I would recommend downloading those into the saved models folder in here. Um, I set that up as just a placeholder. There's nothing in the saved models here because it's uh, those are large files, so they can't store on GitHub. But basically, you just download them, put them into that folder. Um, you can put them wherever you want, but I think it's just more organized to do that. So download to whichever one you want to play with, put them in there. Um, and then these can be used in the inference notebook to start generating some samples. So, and that's the next thing that we're going to do is that uh, go on to the inference, inference section. We have unconditional generation and then some style transfer we're going to get into in this as well. So we have this here and then we're, we installed everything that we needed to and we're going to just run Jupyter Notebook from the base folder. Then open up one of these. Can I just probably just make this full screen now? Okay, now that we have opened up, here's all of our folders. We're going to open up the inference notebook. All right, so now that we're in the inference notebook, you can read through. It has kind of the instructions of what you want to do, but basically we're just going to step through each one of them. Um, I don't recommend do, recommend doing a run all because I did it before, and for some reason the outputs weren't working, so maybe it'll be fine for you, but I just recommend kind of stepping through everything. So we're going to do all of our imports here. Make sure that's fine. It'll probably come up with a little warning here, but not a big deal. This mentions if you need to download models, you can grab them from here. Um, here is where you're going to have that checkpoint path and the config path. So these are where we downloaded. Um, I don't want to do percussion right now. I actually want to do kicks. So we'll start out with, with kicks. Um, so I have it in the save models, kicks, and then here's the checkpoint and the config. So we're going to basically, once these are imported in here, gonna, uh, this is just going to define these and then we'll load them in later. So, and then we'll just step through. These are kind of some helper functions and some things, and this instantiates the model, uh, but doesn't hasn't assigned any of, the, any of the weights from the checkpoint to it yet. So once the model has been instantiated, then we are going to, um, we're going to run this to make sure that the model gets assigned to our GPU. And if it does, it should come up with something here. I don't know why it took so long to, to load. Um, this also should say tiny audio diffusion up here. If not, you can, you can change the kernel that you want to want to be running. So now that we have this, oops, now that we have this going, um, it should say some sort of a, you know, device could have zero right here, meaning it's like, okay, we got this, it worked out, it's assigned to it. And then we're going to load, this is the part where we actually load the checkpoint um, weights onto the model that we had already instantiated. So once we get that done, it should, if it does it successfully, yeah, it should come up with all keys match successfully. So if that's if that's like that, that means your model is loaded in and we are good to go. So we're going to start generating some samples. Um, so if right here, I'll get this moving because it takes a minute to go and then I'll explain a little bit. Uh, for this, the sample length, this is going to be how long it's going to be. Um, this ends up being 2 to the 15 is in samples at 44.1 kilohertz was about three quarters of a second. That's what the models were trained on, which sounds pretty short, but it's actually is all right for drum samples um, that can be extended. But again, limited, limited, uh, RAM for the for the GPU wanted to have kind of high quality samples with um, you have to have limited time for that. So sampling rate is at 44 to 1. Um, number of samples, we're going to generate three different samples here. And then we're taking 50 diffusion steps, uh, denoising steps, basically. Um, 10 to 100 is a good range. 10 can be a little bit noisy still. Um, anything above 25 actually is it ends up being pretty good. So then once that's 
those are basically defined there. Then we just run this and then this starts to generate some of these samples here. Um, so we have them here. Let's listen to all of them here. Let's generate one, sample one, two, three. Okay, that's a little bit more like an 808 there. Um, and then I also have a quick thing here. It's like if you want to listen to all of them in a row. Okay, cool. So, and you, and you can have as many as you want. You can do, you know, 50 if you want. It's just going to take a long time. Um, and then if you do less steps, obviously it'll go quicker, but it'll be a bit noisier. So that's how you can work with those uh, for the kicks, you know, just kind of generate random, random kicks uh, based on what the house is trained. And then another cool thing that you can do is I, I think it's called, you know, style transfer. Um, there's a bunch of different names for it, but it's basically generating new sounds conditioned on input audio that you put in there. So instead of starting with just noise, um, we're actually going to put in a snare drum and I'll get this going again because it takes a second. We're going to put in a snare sample from the samples that we have, which is actually this does this does come with the repository. Um, and then we're going to turn that into a kick drum, basically sample with noise. Uh, true. Actually, I don't know if we want to have this true. Make sure that we have these all because we're not we're not we're not going to noise it yet. I actually have a couple of these backwards here. So let's start off. Let's, let's restart this actually. So you can look at these to you know define these each one. Um, sample with noise basically like you have the option to noise the sample. You can either just put in the snare raw, or you can have a snare and then add some white noise on top of it. Um, and then if you have that noise, then you can view it. Basically, that's the option to view it. Um, if you need to trim the sample, you can, and then you can have whatever the trim sizes here. We don't need to do that because it's actually the right the right uh, length. Um, sample rate. The number of samples we're only going to do one for this. Um, we're not noising it for the first one. We will in a minute. But um, for this one, we're not, and we're only doing a couple steps because uh, it actually turns into a into a kick drum pretty quick. So we ran this. We're starting out with this this snare drum, and then it it takes a couple diffusion steps and then turns tries to turn it a little bit into a bass drum. So you can hear how it keeps some of its uh, character, but then also has a lot more bass to it. So it's kind of something interesting you can play play around with. Um, if you do more steps, it kind of turns it almost completely into a bass drum. So I just wanted to have lower steps because then uh, then it kind of has some interesting interesting changes here. So okay, so that's the kick the kick uh, model, and the other one that I wanted to show is the percussion model. So we're gonna load that in now, and um, there also is a hi hat and and snare model too. We won't get into those today, but you can play around with those as well. Percussion model basically just has a bunch of different drum types that I put in, so it's kind of a little bit more random and, and has some uh, more variability. So we load those in there. We run this again um, the, from the percussion. Again, these are downloaded and saved. And then uh, we can skip these. You can run them again if you want, but you don't need to. And then we're just going to run uh, load those that checkpoint into the model so the weights are updated into this model. So once we have that, should say all keys match successfully. And once we have that, we're going to be good to go. To, OK, cool. So we have that there. Um, for just random samples, it's going to, we're basically going to do the same thing here. I'll get this going again because it takes a minute. Um, moving all over the place here on you. <laughs> uh, like I said before, it's like we're going to do about a three quarters of a second, same sampling rate, three samples, and then 50 steps, denoising steps. Okay, now that we're uh, back and these are these are generated, um, I just skipped ahead there just to make sure that it wouldn't take too long to have to listen, wait for these to load. Um, we'll just take a listen to them. So that's kind of a a shaker sound, snare drum, and then I don't even know what that is. That's wild. I kind of like that. I'm gonna mess with that and something. Um, so and if you want to download these, you can just you can just download them too. Uh, and then here's all of them together. So you can hear there's a bit of variability with the percussion model. Um, and then I think some of the fun stuff that comes in with the percussion models, you can do the same st type of style transfer where I'm going to update a couple of these. Uh, here I have some things preset. Um, so I'll get this going again because it takes a second. So updating a couple of this, we're still going to do snare one. Um, we are going to listen to it with noise because we are adding a little bit of noise here. Uh, and then trimming the sample, we're going to make this a little bit shorter just to show that it doesn't have to be the same length. You could trim it if you want. And then if it's longer, it actually it pads with zeros, but that's kind of unnecessary <laughs> to do for this right now. Um, 
and then we're taking we're only taking 20 steps here so then we just run this block which this could be cleaned up a little bit but that's fine we're starting out with this sample same snare we had before adding some noise so you can hear how there's the snare still there, but there's a bunch of noise on top of it, and here it's resampled. So we went from to a kind of muted sound. So let's try it with a different one, snare two here. Same thing. We'll listen to the original sample and the noise. So and here's the generated sample. Kind of turns it almost into like a bongo sound. Yeah, so there's some interesting things that it can uh, change or the, you know, transfer styles as it's going across there. Um, and then also there's another interesting thing. It doesn't have to just be drum samples. It can also be other audio that you put in there. You can hum, you can do something else. So I want to show you uh, just using a guitar sample. Again, to get this running because it takes a second. Um, just loading in a guitar sample, you don't have this in your repository obviously i just have this for the video uh we'll listen to it with noise this is actually a little bit longer we are trimming the sample because it's quite a bit longer but we're trimming it to about one and a half seconds now adding a only a little bit of noise and then taking 30 steps so here's the sample okay nice guitar sound adding a little bit of noise there and then it's gonna we're gonna denoise it into an interesting drum sound so it may not be the most pleasant sounding thing, but you can mess around with it and make some cool things out of it. So you can actually hear there's a little bit of that guitar left over. So, but it's just cool that you can take something like this and turn it into a drum sound. So there's a bunch of things you can do to play around with this. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's kind of fun to mess with. And then here there, if you generated more than uh, more than one, it would put them together just like it does up there, but it's, it's only one sample here, so it's just the same thing. Um, so those are some ways that you can use this repository to get started generating samples and you know experimenting with audio waveform diffusion. Um, this repository also has information about training, uh, training your own models here, um, and and how to do it with you know on your CPU. It takes a long time, uh, you know, a GPU, and then with checkpoints. And there's a little more information there about the repository. Um, so if, if you do want to fine tune or, uh, you know, fine tune any, any of these pre-trained models that I have here or, uh, train your own models from scratch on, you can do other drum sounds that you have. Um, I used, I used, uh, some open source samples that I had gathered myself, but still a pretty small amount. So you can do more, um, or other sounds that might not be drums that could be interesting. Uh, and you can get started there. And so if you, um, if you have any questions about this um, or having trouble with it, don't hesitate to like leave a comment or something. I'll try to answer to the best of my abilities and, and you know, try to figure out what's going on. Um, I plan to continue updating this repository. So whether it's adding more functionality or training different models, um, I'm not really sure. But moving forward, I, I still plan to do some more things with it. Um, so things, I'm just saying that things may be different. Uh, for when this video is filmed, but I don't think that it should be that much different. It should be similar enough to still follow along. Um, so thanks for watching and, you know, have fun playing around with this and creating new sounds. Uh, feel free to, to share what you create, whether it's a new models or using it in music or, or whatever. Um, one of the things that I'm so excited about with all this recent audio AI development is the potential for so much new creativity. And, you know, I want to share that potential with as many people as possible. So, um, you know, hopefully this can help towards that goal. Um, but otherwise, you know, like I said, thanks for watching and until next time.